Hi everyone, Peter here, and today I'm going to uh, assemble a uh, GR Research XLS model. These are the ones that I cut out recently on CNC router. And um, first of all, I'll cover what some of the materials, well, two of the glues I'm going to use are. This is PL Premium, and it is a high viscosity polyurethane construction adhesive. Not typically used for stuff like this, but there's one place where it works really well, and I'll show you where that is. This is Type Bond 1 or Original Type Bond. Uh, really high quality glue. I like it a lot. I've used it for years, and there's probably others that'll work just fine, but uh, that's what I'll be using. So, quick plug in their products and get on with assembly. One thing I would always recommend is that you dry fit everything and put it together, clamp it up, make sure that things are going to work the way they're supposed to. I, uh, I don't think there would ever be a problem, but uh, better to know beforehand than when you start getting glue on things. So what we've got here is top and bottom, they're identical. We'll set those aside. The sides are actually identical, so there's no right or left there. The front, there is a orientation you need to pay attention to, and that's Obviously the holes are going to tell you that it's the outside of the cabinet. The recess for the tweeter is going to be on the front side. The back side will have a radius for the, the woofer. On the backs, there's two possibilities. This one has a binding post cup and the recess cut for it. And that's a more traditional way of, of uh, hooking up speakers and then the porthole on top. And then the one I'm going to do today is this other one here. This is using Danny's barrel connectors and a porthole on top. So those, the only difference between those is the type of speaker connections that will be made. Set this one aside. And this is a brace that goes between the two sides. All, this is a really rigid little box. It, uh, by the time you get all the bracing in, I suspect you could park a car on it and don't know why you would, but you could. So that goes in there and these recesses are where I'll use the PL Premium. This stuff is not really intended to be used in the way that I'm using it, but it works really well, or I shouldn't say used, but applied. So I usually gun some out on a scrap of wood and use a, uh, this is an acid brush. You can get these at Harbor Freight or other places in quantity, they're disposable brushes, and I'll just get a little bit on my end of my brush, and I'll kind of scrape it off on the edge of that hole. There's no real need for it to be anywhere beyond the, the interior of that hole, although some will squeeze out probably when you assemble this. So that's probably about a little more than a pencil eraser's worth of glue going on there. Set that aside, and I'll do it from this side so you can kind of see what's happening here. Give that a little spin just to spread that glue around. You'll see some coming out around the, the uh, perimeter there. And this is intended to have clearance so that any excess glue can squeeze out. That's the way I designed the, the hole in there. And the, the uh, dowels are not always real consistent in diameter so that accommodates that as well. Oh and I got ahead of myself. I forgot one thing. And that's glue here. You'll see why. So I'm putting the bead of glue in that corner where the vertical side meets the horizontal one. And glue and quantity of glue is something that I've developed kind of a feel for, but it's not always obvious. What I don't like to see is tons and tons of glue squeeze out. It just makes a mess and doesn't really add any strength to the whole assembly. And so what I'm doing here is I'm spreading that glue around and I'm making sure that I get it up on this vertical surface. Ideally, you'd get glue on all the surfaces of the joint without any excess squeezing out. Well, we know that's not going to happen, so the next best thing is just a little bit of squeeze out. So by spreading that around, I can kind of get a good idea if I need to add any more glue, or when I clamp it, it will actually distribute the glue in places 
that you don't see it get done by my brush here. It's not super precise work, but my pet peeve, I guess, is having ooze getting everywhere on my bench and on my clamps, and there's just no need. It doesn't add anything in the way of strength if it's outside the joint. So there we've got that done, and we'll go back to square one here, put that in, line it up with the other side. This is the three-handed part. I'm using my chest as kind of a brace. Yeah, get those where they're kind of standing up, and I'm just using a scrap of MDF as my assembly surface here. It's nice and flat and it'll allow me to do that right there. So the front will go on, this will go to the inside of the box. Be kind of gentle at this point so things don't start falling over. And then on this, the, the porthole goes at the top across from the tweeter. Kind of push that together. And you'll see a little bit of glue squeeze out on the inside, and that's no big deal. It's uh, intended to be a little bit of glue, but, but you don't want to see gobs of it. If it's dripping down on your table, you probably are using too much glue. First thing I'll do is put a clamp on the back and the front. And what I'm trying to do is push these two together. So I want them to bottom out in those rabbits before I clamp it this direction. And I'm putting these so they're out of the way of where the clamps will go. It gives me an opportunity. I'm just snugging those down, not putting tons of pressure on. Make sure my joints are still flush here, which they are. Look inside, get an idea of what's going on in terms of where they are in the rabbit. So a little bit of pressure on those. And, my goodness, I forgot to take my clamps off the other box I just put on. And you'll see my clamps magically appear. I should have put them in place, trying to make this video as brief as possible. So, here I'm clamping the two sides this direction on the rabbit. And what I'll do is put a little pressure. First, try to get the clamp adjusted right. Put a little pressure at the bottom. A little pressure at the top, and that makes sure that the joint is squeezed, squeezed, yeah, squeezed together. And then to clamp it, got the glue on the clamp there. Some glue I'll clean up as I go, but not. All of it. Get that aligned and clamp that side. Same thing on the back. And what I'm looking for when I assemble this is I'm looking at the gap between these pieces. And that little snap you heard was actually glue starting to set. So you've got to be kind of quick about doing this. It, uh, the glue, especially on MDF, will set pretty quickly. And uh, so go and get a coffee in the middle of the whole thing, probably not a good idea. Again, a little pressure top, a little pressure bottom. Make sure I get a consistent bead of glue coming out there. And then put that on like that. That's going to Tighten these up to the point where you want them for, um, you want them fixed at that point. Now I can take these clamps off, they're not doing anything anymore, and we'll talk, uh, not we'll talk, we'll assemble the top and the bottom. These are sometimes kind of a snug fit, but they should drop into place fairly easily. Sometimes you need to tap them in, but if they're going in hard, Something else is wrong. Same thing, putting the glue in the same places up on the 
in the kind of crux between the vertical and horizontal. Again, tops and bottoms are the same. There's holes for there's holes for the shoot foam brush. That one had my peel premium on it. For the crossover, you'll see right there, and they're in both the top and the bottom, so it doesn't really matter which way you use it. You just have extra holes. Brush that out. Again, I'm getting it on that vertical surface where it's going to naturally want to run off, and then spreading it out on the, on the flange part of that rabbit. And that should hold. The glue itself will hold, and I'm going to wipe a little of this excess off so I don't get it anywhere. It's actually what I try and avoid doing is getting excess glue. It just is just doesn't do any good in the long haul. Spread that out, get it on that vertical surface, and come back. This is the fastest way I've found to do this. You can stand it up and put a bead of glue on that surface, but it ends up being a lot of handling, and honestly, you get to the same place in the, in the end game. So I'll flip that over, front, back, top, bottom, all the same. So no need to worry about that. And now, flip that over on its top. And you can see the glue squeeze out here. This is maybe a little more than I'd like to see, but more than that, if it's dripping and oozing all over, it just causes you problems and doesn't really solve any problems. So on this, I'm putting this clamp, I'll put one on either side and Ideally, this bar is going to be parallel to that surface, and that takes advantage of what a clamp like this does, and that's clamp in a parallel action. Although you could do it with regular bar clamps. You could even do it with clamps like these. It's just, uh, it, this is taking advantage of, of what things are actually made to do. Make sure those are good and snug, and you'll see my bead uh, of caulk, not caulk, let's call that glue, glue coming out there and there, and that's ideal. You know you got enough in the joint, but you know you don't have a ton of excess. And I'll leave that glue alone because when it dries, it'll come off real easy with a router. If you try and smear it or cut it or, or scrape it off, it just gets all over in places that you don't really want it. And one thing I might do, at this point, I reach in and I give that that dowel brace a spin just to make sure it's free because it should rotate freely at this point. Once that glue starts to set, you don't want to try and spin it. So do that early on in your assembly and you should be good. Same thing on this side. Really parallel. Probably you can see that better from the camera angle than I can from here. Tighten those up. Again, I'm looking for that glue squeeze out right there. And one thing I can tell you as I'm looking at here, this didn't close up real good, so I'm going to loosen this clamp and let that clamp shove that a little that direction. And you, I don't know if you saw that, but there's a, a period of time when that clamp or that glue is liquid enough to let something slide a little without affecting the overall glue joint strength. 
If you wait very long though and you move it, it will affect the strength. So I'm just momentarily letting that suck up a gap that I saw. Make sure all my clamps are tight. And that's it. So next will be brace installation and then tomorrow flush trimming of the uh, overhanging edges, which by the way, all those overhang about about 20 to 30 thousandths is what was designed in. So it should make a nice square box when you're all done. And so we'll get back to this when I put the braces in. See you soon. Okay, back again, it's brace installation time. And what you'll see here, this has been unclamped for about 45 minutes, or I should say it's been clamped for about 45 minutes. I just unclamped it and I could wait to do this till tomorrow, but it's just an easy time to do it, and that way everything's dry and solid and ready to go when I flush trim them. And you'll see this glue squeeze out right here is ideal. When I go to trim that off, it'll trim all that glue off, and I don't have to worry about it being smeared all around. Or if I have a drip coming down and glue here, what will happen is the bearing on the flush trimming bit will follow that and it just makes for a little bit harder to assemble, I should say, get flush uh, later on. So I'm just going to put some spacers on this so I don't actually set it in the glue. And I'll turn that around since I'm right-handed. These are the braces. There are uh, two going from the side to the back, two going from the side to the top, and two that go from the front to the side. And I use these spacers to put them in the right position. That way I don't have to worry about marking them or guessing. And uh, so the only thing you want to be a little careful of if you're doing this like I am is that center brace is now set just a little bit, but not enough to where you'd want to pick it up and, and use it like a handle. And I am using Type Bond 3 in this case because it's got just a little bit higher tack and it'll hold position on, on something like this a little better uh, because of its tack and because it's a little heavier body than Type Bond 1. So what I'm doing, I got that brace right down here inside the box and I'm going to put this right down in that corner and this aligns with that center dowel brace. And all I'm doing is pushing it right into the corner with my thumb. I'm just shoving it in there. And the glue will distribute, and it might be kind of surprising, but that adds a lot of rigidity. And once it's, that glue is dry, it, it really ties the, the parts of the cabinet together and makes it really strong, really rigid. Um, a good thing when it comes to having a cabinet that's acoustically dead, I guess. So again, I'm pushing that brace against my spacer going that direction and then pushing it into the corner, pulling that brace out and make sure I didn't move that when I pulled it out. Sometimes that happens. And just a little pressure on those will keep them in place. They don't need to be clamped. They, uh, the, the tension, the surface tension of the glue will hold it. Okay, before we do that. And I use another spacer that goes from the bottom, I should say the back, it, it, the bottom with the way I have it oriented here, up to here. And that's, that brace will go in and sit on that and now push it into the corner. side, make sure that's set. And you'll see glue oozing out all around these. No real concern. It's not going to affect anything in terms of later assembly in the cabinet. And I guess what I'm saying, it doesn't have to be pretty. And it's probably not. Okay, 
So those two are set. And you got to be a little careful, I suppose, that you're not knocking those out of place when you're sticking your hands in there. But that's why I work from the bottom to the top because I'm less likely to make one of those things move around. So now this brace is going to go between the side and the front, in between the woofer and the tweeter, right about there. And I use another spacer which I hold in place with my fingers. That way I don't have to change the cabinet orientation around. So again I'm pushing up against the brace going that direction and into the corner. And because those braces stand off the corner a little bit, if there's a little glue squeeze out in there, it just bridges over the top of them. So you don't need to worry about getting it square in the corner. It doesn't change the strength of it at all, but it does change the installation ease a little bit. I slid that a little bit when I went to tighten it up. So I'm putting my brace back in and doing it all over. It wouldn't be critical, honestly, the, uh, the spacing of those, as long as they're not in the way of the tweeter or the woofer, there shouldn't be any problem. So this would be the last one. Put my spacer in there becomes kind of a coordination thing with both hands. Pushing it up into the corner. Letting that brace kind of fall out in my hand and pushing up there again. I usually look to see if I've got any big drips in there that might get in the way of the uh, no res later on. I'll just wipe them off. But I wouldn't get too concerned about that. A little shrink up around the the brace and you'll see photos of that. I'll post them along with the video so you can see what it looks like when it's all done. So that's it for bracing. Next will be the flush trimming and then it's on to whatever you're going to do to finish it, whether it be paint or veneer or what have you. See you next go. Hi everybody, it's Peter again, and uh, today I thought we'd talk about how to defrost your freezer. Nah, not really. We're going to talk about flush trimming on XLS cabinets. And uh, I've already trimmed one side of this, but the battery ran out on the camera, so, and uh, I already did the other cabinet. So there'll be a little bit left on this one. Uh, first thing I'll talk about is a uh, router bit. Hopefully that camera will focus on that all right. That is a quarter inch in diameter, down spiral flush trimming bit, and it's made by Whiteside. I um, have had really good luck with Whiteside bits. I've actually broken some other brands, and these seem really tough. And I use them almost exclusively. Every once in a while in real heavy work, I might use a half inch bit, but uh, they perform really well. Safety glasses, when you're using a router, probably a good idea. These are old eye safety glasses because they got magnifiers built in and uh, that was really nice for these old eyes. And um, also hearing protection, probably something I should have used a lot more when I was younger. My hearing has suffered as a result of it. I've used routers and all sorts of loud equipment. So probably a good idea to use these. So there's a safety protocol. And uh, the way I have this router depth set that bearing, the bottom of that bearing, I don't know how well you can see that from that far away, the bottom of that, or I should say the top of the top bearing is landing about quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths below the seam. And that way it'll take all the glue off as we go and should leave a really nice clean surface that you could easily get ready for paint or veneer or whatever you're doing. So away we go here. Get ready for some noise. I'm going to do 
something I should have done to begin with. I sometimes will take an extension cord and throw it over my shoulders like that. That way the cord isn't hanging up on the edge of the table or I'm not dragging the weight of it around what I'm doing. So I've just found this is an easy way to eliminate that. sides meet the top, that bearing is following that and that's protruding out a little bit the way it's intended to, but I'll take that bump that's left there off when I do the sides, which I'm going to do now. Okay, so there we have a nice flush trim box all the way around. This would be a great place to start if you're going to bevel the edges, if you're going to round over the edges, if you're going to paint, if you're going to veneer, whatever, however you're going to finish the box. This kind of takes it to the next stage, which is sort of up to the person doing it. And uh, so that's it for now. Hopefully that was helpful. And uh, if you've got any questions, you can post them down below and I'll answer them. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next go.